Welcome to Why Knowledge Matters. Welcome, Dr. Al Sharif. It's been great to have you. Thank you very much, Yankee. It's uh, my own pleasure to be with you today. I've seen many of your uh, YouTubes and I was really excited to be with you today. We are also very excited to have you, to be honest. Thank you so much for being here. All thanks for you. Doing a great job. Today we will talk about communities, you, and how would you describe communities? So the word community, if you bring it to real English, it's the word come to unity. So we we'll never be in a good community until we come to unity. We come together. We come to understand each other. Look at it from this perspective. When you have a neighbor and he's from X country, let's say he's from Pakistan and or India, and you go to visit him, he will prepare you his own food or tea or whatever. And when you try it, give it a try and you feel it and you give him your like smile or, or your thanks. It will give him a power that he is welcomed in your heart. And that's the same when he comes to visit you. You bring him uh, some sweets from your country or a dish from your country and try to explain to him. That's the way we can come together. So the whole point of community is to bring the unity in with inside this group of people. Sadly, what we see on uh, small communities or bigger communities perspectives, we do not have that understanding. So we always judge people by their skin of colors, maybe religion, maybe even their, their language. So... Uh, that's the whole point. You're judging people by something you've been educated on. But if we go through this part and do not judge people, do not make uh, uh, assumption that he is good or bad because of something on his skin or because of, of his color or because of his religion. So let's go in and talk to him. Uh, so the whole point of my vision is to knock the door of your neighbors and to talk to them, to go and talk to strangers, to explain to them who you are. So if you look at this perspective, the indigenous people, let's, let's talk about the indigenous people. Uh, the, the government of Canada and I think the United States trying to make some talk between nation to nation. However, I think it's failing. And if you ask me why, I answer very clearly because we never come to this unity because we never understood what the indigenous people believe in, what the indigenous people eat at daily basis, what the indigenous people do when they visit each other, what the indigenous people uh, do when somebody die, when somebody's getting married. I, I have some, like, I think, 90% of Canadians do not know these answers. Why? Because we did not try to even go and find an indigenous person or, or family and make a friendship with them. Maybe try to visit them. Uh, you know that they like, for example, to uh, give tobacco as a kind of, of respect to each other. Maybe in other culture, giving this tobacco, it's it's not good because tobacco is harming your health. So why are you giving me tobacco? So you have to understand this perspective. You have to believe that these people on this land, not because they've been born here, no, because they've been here and we have to respect them and they have to respect us. And that's the whole point. I've talked to many indigenous people. They never say that guys, you, Newcomers go back to your countries. They never say that. The problem when you see racism within the community, it comes from people who came from somewhere and because you are black or because you are brown or because you are Asian, 
they will tell you, or because your accent is not Canadian, they will tell you, go back to your country. But excuse me, where do you come from, okay? So this is the land of everybody. And the indigenous people believe in that. They never say that you have to go back to your country. They are the people who were born here for thousands of years. So the way we have to respect them is not just to put on paper that we need to make uh, reconciliation with them. It's the way we step one extra step and do this reconciliation. When we go to really understand their culture, their religion, their drumming, their dancing, their singing, their throat singing, whatever, you know, I always say like, I'm respectful that I'm standing on an indigenous land that was unsurrounded and I respect those people, the indigenous people of this land. That's why I put this in my back. It's, 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 I feel it. This is their land and we have to respect them the same way they respect us. What made you interested in communities? <sighs> you know, Yannick, <sighs> This is, this is the earth we inherited from our parents and we want to give it back to our children. But do you want to give your child a worse home that you lived in? I don't believe in that. You know, everybody wants to leave his child in a better situation. And that's the whole point. If we want to give this land to <coughs> our children or our grandchildren, we have to leave it in a better place. Sadly, we are doing more damage in, in many aspects. We are doing damage on environments. The, the 20 years, the, the last 20 years only, the damage we made in the environment, it's tremendous. And that was shown with the, the one year pandemic when we st st uh, stayed home and we didn't use our cars and all these things. The second thing, the, the, the food industry. It became disaster. Look within how many, within the last 20 years, how many children have allergy from the food. We never heard that in the 50s or 60s because the food was healthy. Now we are doing rubbish and we call it food, excuse me. The third, poverty. The fourth, wars. We, we've seen wars in this 20 years or 30 years, more than the second and first world war. It happened once in the, in the First World War, Second World War. Yes, many people died, many people fought there, but we sadly have people dying from other things and wars in these 20, 20 years, more than those on the First or Second World War. So why we do that? We are not doing the best. We are not bringing the best for our earth. We are not giving a better earth for our children, yes. We are trying to go to some other planets, but why? Why? If you have a house, rebuild your house before you go and change other places' houses. So that's my point. If you want to change the world, everybody, everybody have a mission to change the world in his mind. Change yourself first. Change yourself. Change your family. Then go to your community, smaller community. Then you can grow to your city, then to your nation, wherever country, then you can change the world. But you can't change the world when you're sitting and doing nothing. Or you have the opposite, using the car, whatever you want, using the you trash, you using plastic, you don't recycle, all these things, small concepts. But if we do them together, we will change the world. Why does community matter we we as humans are social animals we can't stay without socialing without being together you know uh, if you watch tom hank uh, cast away you will understand the psychological and mental problems he went through that period of time when he was on that island and it was a it was a movie but during the pandemic 2020 2021 we've understood this because we 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 miss this human interaction we start afraid each other when you go through the streets and you see somebody's coming you start panicking oh, 
I have to go to the left or to the right. We start afraid from each other. Why? Why? Because we can't live without human beings. We can't live without neighbors. We can't live without family. This is the human being. So to tell you the truth, there is no way that we can stay in this pandemic until we stand together. Let me give you an example. This pandemic uh, taught me a lot. I, I am a medical doctor. I'm, uh, I've been in the field for in many countries. I try to help uh, children with cleft lips and palates in, in many poor countries uh, during my volunteer trips. But, you know, we never cared that much. When Ebola hit Africa, so what? You know, people in, in North America, so what? It's Africa, you know, it's too far. When this pandemic, when this COVID-19 virus hit the first man in, in Wuhan city in China, nobody cared. Nobody even know his name until now. Nobody even prayed for him to go back to his family. Nobody prayed for his family to be supported or God to support them. Nobody did that because nobody cared. I'm telling you the truth, I'm too. Because it was like, okay, so what? He's far. But when, the, when this virus flew thousands of miles and knocked on every single house's doors and scared all of us, destroyed countries, families, destroyed people's life. This, a lot of people died and I pray for their souls now because every, almost every single person now on this earth knows somebody who died from this. It destroyed the economy. And now we start caring because it's here. There's one principle we have to understand, and this is very important principle. No one is safe on this earth until everyone is safe. So if we start now shouting, like in Canada, we have a situation, we don't have enough vaccines and everybody is shouting. The government is not doing its best or whatever you know but please before you say these words remember one thing there is one country in africa received only 25 doses of the vaccine that means 12 and a half people will be vaccinated in this country 12 and a half people only 25 doses so if you complain and you think that these people do not deserve a vaccine, you do not deserve to live. Because again, no one is safe until everyone is safe. And that's what the COVID taught us. It's not because this guy is far away, thousands of miles, he's in China or in Cambodia or Vietnam or even in Africa, Malaysia, that I, I'm safe because I'm far. No, this virus can fly easily now. You know, it's, it's so simple to understand that we have to be together. I understand politicians, they play their roles. They, they have their own twist of everything. That's totally up to them. But we humans, we people, we nation, we have to understand. Most of the media, sadly, they... They, they try to infiltrate information in your mind. Look at the media now, okay? There are too many people against this whole pandemic, the anti-mask movement, or whatever you call it, or anti-pandemic movement. And they think that there is no virus. I understand them. I have to respect them. I have to respect their views. But at the same time, I have to tell them, as I respect your view, you have to respect mine, okay? Your view, it depends on some information you got from some sources. I got my view from other information. Let's sit together and talk. Let's bring these information together and decide which information is more kind of acceptable to minds. And that's the way we can go to a mid middle ground where we can understand each other. It doesn't matter if he 
fully do believe in this mask or I fully do believe in anti-mask, but at least we understand that we have to respect each other. My decision of wearing mask, his decision of not wearing mask, it's his decision. So this is an example of a huge problem happening now in the community. People start shouting, cursing them, and they again cursing these people. So it will be a circle of, of doing bad and bad and bad and bad, and it will never end. That's the whole point. So we will never understand it, you know, until we really sit together. Yankee, why I sit with you? Why, why when you call me or we send me an email, I accepted your invitation directly because I want to show like, like sitting with you even, understanding your views, you understand my views. Maybe we can do something. Maybe I will hunt for your ideas and or you will hunt for my ideas and we get to something bigger we, where we really can change the world. Why does community matter in the future? As I said, everything is going into wrong direction now. Sadly, more diseases, more, uh, more harmful things we can see, uh, worse food, uh, pollution. So uh, if the community does not stand together and come to the unity again, we will not be able to change the world. We will not be able to make a real difference in this earth. And believe me, uh, our children will come to the day that they said, they could curse us. What did you leave for us? You left us a piece of garbage. The earth was damaged, the earth is broken, the environment is broken, the food is broken, everything is bad, and we want to leave them like, who doesn't care about his children? Why we educate our children? Who doesn't care about the education of your children? But all that goes in one basket. And the, uh, the bigger basket is where does he can make his dream? It's on this earth. So if this bigger basket is broken, is rotted, whatever you put inside, it will stink. Whatever you do, it will not help him. And the opposite, it could harm him. And you know what? We have to stand together. I do not believe in one hand clapping. It will never clap. It's only when you stand together, when you give back to the community, when you do something, the small step extra. And I, I, I just want to remind everybody, when you donate to some, 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 causes or, or organization or whatever, you do your part. Even a $1 can change the whole game because every single mountain started from a small stone. And that stone with another stone, with a third stone, with a bigger stone, with a smaller stone, they can build a mountain. So no, no movement can be done without this generosity of people. So don't underestimate your, 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 your uh, donation, even your prayer, even your, your help, even your volunteer. You know, I love one say, I don't know who said it, but it says, do not ever underestimate the volunteer work. The Titanic, uh, Noah Ark was built by volunteer. However, Titanic was built by professionals. And that shows you that really volunteer can do a lot of work. This is, by the way, the uh, appreciation volunteer week. So I would like to appreciate every single person who give from his time to this community, from his power, from his family time to help others. Because without volunteers, believe me, we will not survive any cause, which is good. Most of these causes, sadly, big organization, big companies, giant 
corporations, they have a lot of money. They can hire people, they can slave people. It's, it's easy for them. But small organization, good, in good deed organization, they need volunteerism. They need those volunteers. They need your donation. So please try to help them. Go, you know, I, I, I just want to say one thing, others. It's community. So when you speak about community, with the, within the pandemic, many, many local uh, businesses were destroyed because most of us now go online open an app from a huge companies and buy whatever we want from that company. It will, it will be delivered easy to our house. However, we are destroying our local businesses. So my suggestion is pay this extra 50 cents or $1 and go by yourself. Talk to your local grocery store, local barber or whatever, you know, these local stores, talk to these businesses and you will see how much they suffer. And this is again, that can come to unity because if these people close their businesses, they will not pay taxes the government. Then so the government, they will raise our taxes because they don't have enough money and that will go a circle. So if we support them, we will minimize their risk of closing so we will minimize the risk of uh, losing their taxes paid to the government. Then we will minimize the uh, taxes we will pay. So if you think it this way, you will see it's win-win situation. I win. I, I maybe pay a dollar now more, but I will save $10 from my tax next year. And believe me, this is coming. Believe me, this is coming because... I don't know how many economies were destroyed by this COVID. And that's what showed, you know. Your favorite book and wishes for the future. I do read a lot of books. Uh, my uh, my favorite book, uh, I, I, I can't say my favorite, you know. Uh, I love the uh, 100 Best uh, Humans Living. It's a nice book. Uh, there is a... Uh, a book written by Dr. Abdul Aziz uh, uh, about his daughters. Uh, I forgot the name. I shall not hate. I shall not hate. This is a very beautiful book. I suggest everybody read it. Uh, and I do wish everybody to be safe during this pandemic time, after this pandemic time, and do wish everybody to come to unity to build a better community thank you so much dr al sharif and thank you for sharing your very important message to our viewers thank you yanki i i would like to sh to thank you uh, for what are you doing uh, it's a great job uh, it's not easy uh, to bring people together you are doing what the come to unity things so uh, wish you all the best uh, and I hope this people listening will share these videos, they will subscribe to your channel and will support you as much as they can Thank you so much wonderful Dr. Al-Sharif All You're the welcome. best, thanks You're welcome, thank you